Hi, and welcome to Creative Chelsea. If you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up or commenting below. If you want to see more of my videos, press the subscribe button and click on the bell for notifications. Today I have for you a fun die cutting technique. I'm calling it double die cutting to create a window frame. So let's go ahead and learn how to make this card. So you don't need a lot of cardstock to create this card. Remember all of the measurements for the cardstock as well as the items I've used are in the description box below. So I would highly recommend you use a thick cardstock for the card base because we're going to be cutting a lot from it and we don't want it to be flimsy. So I'm using Stamping Up's thick white cardstock and you're going to go ahead and just cut, cut your normal card base size and then score it with a bone folder. The products that I will be using today include the Good Morning Magnolia stamp set. This is such a great stamp set. It actually comes in two cases because of this really large image which we're using on our card today. And then we're also using the coordinating dies. They're called the Magnolia Memory dies. And they're really fun. They not only have the dies to cut out the images from the stamp set, but they also have standalone dies that are really great to use that create a similar look and coordinate really well with the whole suite. We also are using the rectangle stitched framelit dies to give us that window frame. The first thing you want to do is choose a window frame size and I'm using the one that is four and a half inches by three and one eighth inches and that's roughly the size of the die so it's going to make a frame just slightly smaller than that. I'm going to grab a pencil and I'm going to center this die on my card front and I'm just going to trace the inside of this die. Now I can trace this because it's not going, we're going to be cutting just outside of that tracing line. And so I know that I don't need to worry too much about that line. And this also is going to give us a rough estimate of where we're going to be cutting so we can place our stamp where we want it. So for this card, I have the stamp coming from the top left corner. And I wanted, when I was putting the card together, it got flipped around and I noticed that I also liked it with going this direction. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp it this direction coming from the bottom right corner just to give us a variety on how our card is created. I'm going to use the Stamparatus for the stamping today. And I like to use the Stamparatus, especially when I'm stamping large images, because if by chance I don't get a good clean image, then I can just restamp it without having to worry about lining it up. So I'm going to place my card base in my Stamparatus and use the magnet magnets to hold it down in place. So I'm going to remove it from my top plate and I'm going to place it on my card. Now there are a couple things that when you're doing this technique that you want to keep in mind. So it is, um, it's difficult to do a double die cutting if you have multiple points where it's touching the outside frame. So like, for example, I can't have this coming here and then being able to cut this out. It, I mean, you could give it a try. <clears throat> it really just depends on the size of uh, plates that you're using and if you can maneuver it to get it that just that whole cut. So the easiest thing to do is just to have two points so um, of connection where the two dies will meet. So for example, my rectangle die is going to meet here with my magnolia die as well as here. So I don't want to have too many points of connection. So I'm going to line up my stamp where I want it to be. I want it to be coming out of this corner slightly and I want, I'm okay with my leaves coming off my card. Then again, I don't have it coming over there. Okay, so I'm good with that. So I'm gonna add my plate 
to my Stamparatus and I'm going to pick that up. Now I just noticed that I'm going to have some um, stamp image on my grid. So I'm going to just grab some scrap paper and slide that underneath so that it doesn't get on my grid. So this is just a piece of my grid paper that I use and I've cut it down. Stamping Up does make specific grid paper for your Stamparatus. So um, I can link that in the products that I've used in the description below. And if you're interested in purchasing that, you can get that from my online store. Okay, so I think we're good to go ahead and stamp. So we're going to be using the Memento Black Ink to stamp our image. I'm just gonna go ahead and ink that up. and stamp it down. Nice even pressure. And check your image to make sure that it all came out the way you want it. And then you can go ahead and remove it from your Stamparatus. Now, if it didn't turn out and you're missing spots, some spots, don't touch anything and just re-stamp it. You don't even need to re-ink it because that ink should still be on your stamp. Okay. So put that off to the side. We'll use that again for our greeting. So what we're going to do now, we're going to use the die that matches that stamp and we're going to place it on our card with a little bit of tape to hold it in place. And I always place tape in areas that I'm not going to use, um, that are not important for my card. So I'm not going to be using this inside of the frame so I can go ahead and place the tape inside there. That way if it rips the cardstock when it goes, because it gets super sticky when it goes to the big shot, that it that, that doesn't matter to me. Okay, so I'm just going to put some on this side. Remember, don't go over your image. And I'm going to put some over here on this side just to hold it down in two places. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to place this through my big shot. What I've got is my magnet magnetic platform as well as my cutting plate. And then I have an old cutting plate that broke. Now I've tried doing this with a full cutting plate and it's very difficult. So the best way to do this is with a smaller plate. Now if you've got an old plate like I do that's really well loved and used, um, and they sometimes tend to warp and then start cracking along the edges. And that's what happened here. And I went ahead and finished breaking it and then kept those pieces for projects like this. All right. So the key here is to only place the plate, the top plate, over the areas we want to cut. So like, for example, we don't want this part of our die cut because that's on the outside of our frame. We only want it on the inside. Now you also have to think about the fact that this frame is, is a little larger than the line we drew. And so I found while practicing this technique that giving about a fourth of an inch leeway into our frame helps so that we can slide that rectangle into where we want. So let's go ahead. So we're going to measure about a fourth of an inch from this window line into the frame area. Now just make sure it's not touching any other parts of the die that we don't want cut. So you can see that it's not gonna cut any of these outside frame dies. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this through the Big Shot and then I'll be back and show you the next step. Okay, so you can go ahead and look at where it's cut. You can see that it's cut all the parts on the inside, but not the outside edge. So we do need to make our second cut over here on the right side. So that's where this part of having a smaller piece comes in play, because if we had our large plate, it would want to cut this whole section out, and that's not what we want. So a smaller plate is better. So again, we're going to focus on this window here on the bottom, and we want to cut about a fourth of an inch into that frame. So line up your edge so that it moves about a fourth of an inch in. 
Remember, don't cut any extra parts. You're just cutting that one connection piece, right where the, the frame and the die connect. Okay, just double check that you're not cutting any other parts of your frame, only staying with inside that window. And then I'm gonna run this through my Big Shot. Okay, so you can go ahead and take a look. So we've got a connection point along there and a connection there, and then our magnolia has been cut inside that window. So we can go ahead and remove this die. And you can see how sticky that tape gets when we run it through the Big Shot multiple times. So that's why we don't want to do it over any areas that we want to keep. You see it's torn all that cardstock. Okay. So now we're going to get our, our window frame. So our stitch rectangle die, and we're going to slide it under our magnolia and into place where we want it. So you can see right here that because we've given it an extra fourth of an inch, we can get it right up to that edge. And then on this side, we've done the same and we can even slide it down a little bit more if we wanted to. Okay, so you want to have it, you want a little bit of give so that you can center that frame where you want it. So I'm just trying to line up and make sure that it's about evenly spaced. And then I'm going to get some more tape and just, just to hold it in place. Okay, so this time we can use our full top plate because the cutting rectangle is underneath our um, magnolia. So we slid it underneath so you can see that it's not going to cut any paper right there. It's only cutting out the window that we want. So you can go ahead and place that over the whole thing and run it through the Big Shot. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove that rectangle die. And you can see that it just cut out that paper. Now we've finished our technique, double die cutting, to create a window frame card. So there's just a couple things we need to do. And one of them is to erase this light pencil marking from earlier. And I've got just a pencil with a good eraser. Just double check it's not going to leave any markings. And just really lightly erase that pencil line. Okay, and then get your bone folder again and go ahead and crease your um, fold line. Okay, so we can go ahead and color this magnolia. Now, I was thinking about using the Stampin' Up! blend markers. The only problem is they do tend to bleed through, and I didn't really want to worry about that for the card. So I've decided to just use a watercolor technique. Now the thick Whisper White cardstock from Stampin' Up! isn't the best paper to watercolor on. It really soaks up that color quickly. And so you want to work fast. You don't want to go over those areas too much or it will start to bubble and warp the paper. So I'm going to be using Daffodil Delight for the center of my flower. Just get a little bit of ink with a little bit of water and then just dab that into those areas. And then you can take a scrap piece of paper and just squeeze the water until it comes out and runs clear. I always like to work away from the areas I just worked. So because I've done the center of the flower, I'm going to wait for that to dry before I do the flower itself. I'm gonna go ahead and do the leaves next. So I've got Mossy Meadow, Mossy Meadow ink for that. And this is such a dark color, you can really lighten it up with a lot of water. And because this ink doesn't, because when you watercolor on this paper, it doesn't spread very well, you want to start with the darkest colors and then move your way out into the lighter areas. I have a lot of water in this brush. I'm just gonna brush some of that off. Again, darkest areas, and then blend it out. 
And you can see how quickly that water just absorbs into the cardstock. This bigger leaf is a little tricky because you don't want to have, you want it to look like it's all but one smooth color. So you don't want to have some really dark areas in the middle of the leaf. So just start light and then you can go back and just add a little bit of darker. Just remember, don't overwork it too much. And then let's open this up and just work on this edge. The reason we opened it up is just so we don't get any color on the inside of our card. And then there's a little leaf over here that's hiding or been cut off more like it. Okay, so once that green is done, go ahead, squeeze a little bit and wipe until it's clear. Let's go ahead and do our flower next. And I'm using petal pink for that. And if you um, don't know how to get ink in your lid of your ink pads, you just keep it closed and then squeeze the top to the bottom and then you've got some ink there. Or you can use an ink refill dropper and just drop some ink in that lid. I like to do that instead of using other things to hold my ink, just because I know that it's always there and that's the color that it matches the um, ink pad. Okay, so you're just gonna pick up some color and you're going to start kind of the same way we did with those leaves, just by adding a little pink in the center of each flower and then moving it out a little bit. Now we're not going to go into those white tips of the flower. So just keep it in the center. And then as that color kind of dissipates, you can go ahead and blend it out a little bit more. Remember the darkest of that color is just at the base of that flower. Let's see, I think there's another one back here. We can bring that color up a little bit more. And another one right here. Okay. This could probably use a little blending right there. Okay, go ahead and clean that. And then lastly, we're using early espresso just for the stem of the flower. And just grab a little bit of that brown and just rub, bring that into that stem and let it kind of bleed out a little bit from the image. Okay. So let's go ahead and see that close up. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp our greeting. Now this particular stamp set has some really great greetings to go with um, the imagery and I chose the journey of a life is best shared with a friend. We'll get through this together. And I just think that this card is really appropriate for what's happening right now in the world as well as any time that we've got maybe a friend that's struggling and we're there. We want to share that we are there for them. So this first card, the greeting is at the bottom, but in my second card, it's going to be at the top. So I'll go ahead and show you how I figured out where to place the greeting. I've got a piece of mossy meadow cardstock and it's four inches by five and a quarter so that it can fit nicely in this area. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of center it inside the card. And then when I close the card, I'm going to just take my pencil again and just lightly draw some lines to show me where those edges of the window are. So I don't need to go all the way around, just a couple marks to show me edges. Now it's super light. I'm not sure you can see it very well, but I can kind of, I kind of can see where they are. And so I'm going to now place that paper in my Stamparatus. Um, anywhere you want. So I'm just going to place it near the top. I'm going to pick up my image greeting that I want to use and I'm going to place it 
kind of where between those lines, so I've got a line here and here, so I'm going to kind of place it between those lines and then place it within, so my bottom line is right here, or I guess my top line is right here. So I'm going to kind of place it so that I can see where I'm gonna to want to place that. And then I'm going to kind of take my image, and I've tested my image so that I know that the journey of a life is best is pretty straight. So I'm just going to kind of try to eyeball it up with my grid to make sure that it's straight on my cardstock. I'm gonna take my plate, I'm gonna bring it down and pick up my image. Now the nice thing about this is that if my image isn't quite straight, I do have some leeway when I sent, when I add my paper to my card that I can twist it to make sure that it's um, even with my card. So whenever I do heat embossing on dark paper, I want to remove the static and I use a dryer sheet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rub this dryer sheet over the area where I'll be stamping. I'm gonna use Versamark and ink up my image. And then go ahead and stamp that down. So then once we finish stamping it, we're gonna go ahead and move it into some white embossing powder. Just cover it and then tap off any excess. If you do have any areas where the powder is stuck, you can go ahead and just get a, a paintbrush or something and remove them. And then we're gonna heat this up with a heat tool. So that is all done. And so next we're going to add some splatter effect. Now I wanted a splatter effect that we would see well, and so I wanted to be able to heat emboss that. And so I'm gonna show you how I did that. So I have my Versamark refill, and I've placed some in my top of my lid. And then I've got my watercolor or my aqua painter. And so I'm gonna get a scrap piece of paper. Now Versamark and water don't really go together. Versamark's kind of like a gluey ink. And so they, they don't really mix. Um, but we're going to give it our best shot. And so what you wanna do is you kind of want to water down your Versamark. So you can see that when I add my water to my Versamark ink, it kind of bubbles up and gets kind of um, opaque. Um, but you can see that it's kind of foamy in my brush. So you're just gonna try to get some of that mixed with water. Then you're gonna use your lid and the Versamark and you're just gonna splatter like you normally would onto your paper. You're just kind of focusing along the middle area and kind of where the openings of the window will be, okay? So you can go ahead and see how I splattered that. That's just gonna take a minute. We can let it dry slightly before we put it into the heat embossed powder. And while that dries, I'm gonna clean my brush. Now, if you were to feel this, you would feel really sticky, kind of slimy. I'm gonna take it to a sink and get some um, soap on it to kind of break up that, that glue and then clean my brush and my lid and I'll be right back while this dries. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put this in our um, white embossing powder. And I did just want to note that I forgot to remove the static from the whole paper before we flicked on our Versamark or splattered our Versamark. But I think we'll be fine because we're kind of just creating a splatter effect. And if we get some extras in some areas, we can either brush them off or just leave them. Okay, so that looks really good. And then we're just gonna heat this up. Okay, we should probably erase our pencil lines. So just really lightly use your eraser 
and just erase those slight pencil lines we added. You don't want to press hard. You don't want to ruin the cardstock. So now we're going to add this. We're going to kind of get an idea of where we want to place it in our card. And you can see what I mean by we can kind of adjust it to fit so that it um, works with our image. So I'm going to bring it up just a little bit so that it this um, together isn't hidden by the leaf of my flower. Okay, but I like everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. It looks like I'm really close to the top here. And because I had to adjust that slightly, I'm gonna go ahead and just trim off maybe an eighth of an inch here at the top so that I'm not sitting right there on the top edge. So I'm gonna go get my paper trimmer. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove an eighth of an inch. So this is a fourth, so that's about an eighth. Don't wanna to take too much off. So it's always better to start small and then you can remove more if you need to. So let's go ahead and line this up again. I think that looks good. So I'm just gonna hold that down in place and then I'm going to get some tear and tape, which is just some really strong adhesive and tear about three inches or so. And then I'm going to add that to the very top of my, green, my insert, insert. And you just wanna double check that that's not going to show. Go ahead and remove the paper. And then you're just going to lay that down like that, okay? All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some twine. And I've got about 16, 17 inches of twine and I'm going to wrap it around my green, um, my mossy meadow insert, bring those edges into my window. Still need a little bit more. So I'm just gently pulling that twine. I could also just help it along. Let's see. Okay, so that's better. I want it to come underneath that leaf and I'm just gonna tie it a knot first. Okay, and then tie a bow. Go ahead and get it the way you want it to look. And then if you need to, you can trim those tails down. And then I'm just gonna slide it, because it is a little high on the, whatever side that is, the right side. We haven't um, glued our bottom yet to our card. And the reason for that was just so that we could add our twine where we wanted it and have some, uh, we could be able to adjust it as needed. So we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom, about three inches of tear and tape. And we're just going to lift up that flap Add it just to the, the very bottom edge of our Mossy Meadow cardstock. Make sure it's not peeking out. And then just go ahead and add that to your card. Okay, so once you've adhered the top and the bottom, we're going to adhere the flower down. And I wanted it to poke up a little bit, so I'm just using some dimensionals just along the um, tips of the leaves. So you don't need a lot because it's already um, part of the card. And so you just want to be able to bring those leaves down slightly like that. Okay, so then the inside of your card will have that green insert. And then the last thing I wanted to add to this card is a little bit of Wink of Stella to the flower just to give it a little bit of shine. You can see in my original card that it's a little bit shiny along that, the petals. And so I like that look. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. And you don't really squeeze when you use Wink Costella or you get too much. So you just use a, what's in the tip of the brush and then it kind of will flow out 
with the gravity and with using it. So don't do a lot of squeezing, okay? And you can go over it a couple times if you wanna add a little extra. Okay, so our card's all done. I hope you enjoyed learning this fun technique with me today and that you give it a try. Please subscribe, like, and share. Visit creativechelsea.com for a free tutorial of this project and to purchase the supplies needed. Have a creative day. Bye.